Yeah. Call to order, please stand for pledge please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, welcome to the September 14, 2017 Hillsborough Township Planning Board. This meeting has been duly advertised according to Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, Sunshine Law. Roll call, please. Mr. Weinstein? Here. Mr. Peason? Here. Mr. Wagner? Here. Mr. Scobo? Here. Vice Chairman Julian? Here. Mr. Mindell Cora? Here. Mayor Sirachi? Here. Chairman McConnell? Here. First order of business will be <clears throat> the deposition of minutes dated September 7, 2017, which are in your packet for review if you hadn't seen them. We will entertain a motion for approval. Eligible members are Peason, Julian, Lapani, Scobo, and Weinstein. I'll make that motion to approve. I'll second it. Thank you. Now, I was not here for the second half, so I have to abstain from that. No, you, can, you, you were here for enough of it. Enough of it. Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Here. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Vice Chairman Julian. Yes. And Chairman Lapani. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we'll skip down. There's no deposition re resolutions, no planning board, new planning board business, special committee reports. We'll move to any business from the floor <clears throat> uh, that is not on today's agenda. Okay, seeing none, we'll move to the next one, which would be to the consideration of ordinances, which are none, and then that brings us to our first public hearing, which is Distinctive Properties, LLC, file 09PB06SRV. It's a 2017 extension of Block 163.22, Lot 40, formerly Block 163, Lot 21.C, Amwell Road. Applicant is seeking a three-year extension of approval for a major site plan granted by the Planning Board for file 09-PB06-SRV. Resolution dated August 5th of 2010 for a property in the GA Gateway A Zoning District in the ASD Overlay Zone. Attorney? Uh, good evening, <coughs> members of the board. Uh, my name is Michael Ogrodnik. I'm a partner at Savo Shaw Gillespie Ogrodnik and Fisher in Somerville on behalf of the applicant. <clears throat> With me tonight, I have Bruce Jeffrey. He is a member and uh, one of the owners of the LLC, Emerald Valley Road Investors, who is the fee simple owner of this, pro of this property. Uh, as indicated uh, by the chairman, this is a, uh, a request for a three-year extension of approvals. Uh, this, initially, this application by way of preliminary and major site plan a final site plan was approved on August 5th, 2010. It, this is a property uh, that is directly uh, adjacent to the post office to the west or left if you're looking at it uh, to construct a total of 14,000 square foot of retail space in two separate buildings on a 10 acre lot with 49 parking spaces. Uh, this property is located at 440 Amwell Road in the zone as indicated by the board. Although this application began in 2009, uh, the property uh, was not through with all of the conditions of approval until uh, a memo by Mr. White dated January 2nd, 2012. Uh, the permit in 2009, the approvals were automatically extended by the Permit Extension Act, which I know you're familiar with, signed into law in 08, extended in 10, 12, and 14, uh, and expired on June 30th, 2016. Uh, the MLUL provides several exp extensions that can be granted at the discretion of the board uh, approving the site plan, uh, NJSA 40 colon 55 D-52A uh, provides in its relevant part uh, that the planning board may extend uh, such provisions for the protection of the extensions not to ex exceed three years. Um, generally, as, as I'm sure you're aware, and as your attorney, I'm sure, has told you in the past, uh, a final approval of a site plan uh, grants a developer vested rights uh, against changes in zoning requirements for a period of two years after the 
uh, approval of the resolution and adoption of the resolution. MLUL also tolls um, in certain circumstances if there are additional outside agency approvals in which in this case there were uh, certain delays by, by virtue of outside agency approvals. Friends of PPAC Gladstone versus Borough of Gladstone 407 NJ Super 404. It's an appellate division case in 2009. Kind of goes into an explanation of what this means um, and basically says that after the initial two year period in which the approvals are valid and the property rights are vested, that the board may extend the approvals from one to three years. Uh, given the soft costs associated with this approval and out of abundance of caution, on, and although we don't anticipate uh, a zoning change, uh, we are here to request uh, three years of approval extensions. Unless there are any legal questions, I would ask that Bruce Jeffries, uh, Bruce Jeffrey be sworn in to provide some testimony as to why we're requesting these extensions. Okay, I'll we'll swear in. Thank you. State your full name. Speak into the microphone. And spell your last name, sir. Bruce Jeffrey. Last name is spelled J E F F E R Y. And your address. Address 116 Route 22, North Plainfield, New Jersey. Thank you. Good evening, Bruce. Can you give the board the benefit of your professional experience? What you do? Uh, right now, I'm sorry. Currently, me, I've been Jeff, a retail. You just keep, yeah, they keep I've it very close to the. Thank you. Uh, Retail go. brokerage has been my career for the last 25 years. The last 15 years, I've acquired some properties, mostly on the renovation side, uh, renovating them with the intention of uh, self-manage, uh, and that's what I continue to do. Okay. And how, how long? How, how long have you been in specifically in commercial real estate? Uh, every bit of 25 to 30 years. Are you involved in both residential and commercial real estate? Only commercial, strictly on the retail leasing side. Can you explain your ownership interest in the subject property? Uh, myself and two other partners own uh, the property in thirds. <coughs> Can you explain how the, uh, when you acquired the property, roughly when you acquired the property and how the economic downturn affected your ability to develop this particular parcel? Uh, approximately eight years ago, we acquired it with the intention of building a retail strip center uh, we struggled finding suitable tenants uh, in order for the bank to uh, finance the construction side of the property. And have you developed other commercial properties? A couple. Okay. Um, can you explain if the property is currently for sale or lease and what type of interest you've had in the subject? Uh, the property is available for both lease and sale, but our interest is mostly to build it and to rent it out. And. Um, what 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 is hindering uh, the ability to uh, f finance the construction of the of the approved? Uh, we've marketed the property extensively for the last eight years using several different brokerage companies: Remax, Weikert, uh, Jeffrey Realty, and we've just had a very difficult time finding suitable tenants uh, that allowed us the credit to finance it. And um, would a bank to finance the construction of this uh, project require? signed leases? Uh, most often, yes. Uh, they will provide financing just on a letter of intent, but you need to obtain at least 30 to 50 percent uh, interest in the, uh, in the square footage. And what efforts are you currently undertaking to market the property for sale and lease? Uh, signage, social media, uh, networking, um, broker blast, CoStar, uh, LoopNet, just pretty much every available means of marketing is what we've tried to do. Have you any have any offers to purchase or lease the property? Uh, yes, we've always had offers to lease it, but for a fraction of what our uh, interest is in the property and the leasing side, we've had had um, occasional interest from use categories that are not particularly of interest to us, and usually for a very low uh, rental figure with a very high uh, requirement as far as... Um, Leasehold improvements. What types of uh, leaseholds have uh, have you explored? Uh, pizza parlors, nail salons, uh, beauty shops, uh, things that are not necessarily of interest to us. Uh, our preference is to try to find franchise or national chains for the space. Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey. I have no further questions for the witness. Any questions from Davis? I'll, I'll just ask a question. Obviously, you're looking for a three-year extension, and, and you've you've marketed it 
based on the the approval that you have have you considered changing what you would build there to attract a different type of tenant uh, yes, we're open to any ideas. If the bank approached this, uh, either a land lease, uh, build a suit, yes, we would absolutely be open to it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, do we open, make motion open to public? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions on testimony of this witness uh, based on this application from the public? Seeing none. Anything else, Mr. Okrotnik? Uh Mr. Chairman, uh, we just appreciate the board's time and consideration, and uh, I'm sure the board is aware of the type of soft cost that goes into these developments. So we would respectfully request that the uh, board approve uh, an extension uh, for three years, so that uh, Mr. Jeffrey can hopefully find some tenants and get financing, and ultimately uh, improve the property consistent with the approvals. Okay, uh, Mr. Bernstein, is, is this a uh, three years, is this a finite extension, or is it, so you'd have to Well, come that's back? the maximum, but Mr. O'Grodnick indicated the board can go anywhere from one to three years. Uh, I will point out that this, I believe, is the oldest outstanding application <coughs> currently approved by this board nearly now seven years. Um, the board has multiple options. They could grant the full request. They could grant something less than the request and ask the applicant to come back at some point in time in the next three years and tell us where he is and what's going on. You all know the We area. don't need to do three is what you're saying. You don't need to uh, give them but, three. Points. But we could, at some later point, we could get to three. At some later point, you can get to a three. And three is the maximum, but at that point, if they don't have any sale, what would be the? They'd have to come back and ask for another extension. I'm not so sure they're necessarily entitled to one at this point. Right. So this, this is this is ostensibly the last, for lack of a better legal phrase, this is the last gas. The last gas. That's my point. Okay. Thank you. Any comments from the desk? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I I can appreciate obviously the. Uh, the retail dilemma that is in Central Jersey and uh, trying to build there. And um, I would uh, take a motion to, uh, in my opinion, at the max three years, uh, just so that we don't have to uh, burden this board with another hearing nor the, nor the cost for him to come back. Because at that three points, if he hasn't done it by three years from now, he would have to come back again anyway. So. Hopefully, we wouldn't have to see him. So, in, in my opinion, I, I would I would entertain a motion. In my opinion, for the three-year extension, I'll, I'll make that motion. Uh, I think it's deserving of it. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. And roll call, please. Mr. Weinstein. Yes. Mr. Peason. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Yes. Mr. Pestag. Yes. Scobo. Yes. Vice Chairman Julian. Yes. Chairman Del Cor. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Chairman Lofani. Yes. Good luck. Mr. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck. <clears throat> All right. We'll move to our next uh, hearing. This is uh, 814 CRE LLC, 814 Development Veterinary Hospital, file 17 PV04 MS PV, block 142, lot 33-212, route 206. Applicant is seeking prime preliminary and final major site plan approval, C bulk variance for side yard setback, submission waivers for providing a CIS, a parking design waiver to construct new veterinary hospital with parking and stormwater improvements on property in the I-1 light industrial zoning district. Highway approaches must adhere to I-2 zoning ordinance standards. EC review of 72417. Good evening, Mr. Attorney. Chairman. My name is Jay Bone. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Schiller & Bittinger, PC. I represent the applicant. <coughs> As you indicated, we're seeking approval to build a veterinary hospital on Route 206. This use has previously been approved by the Board of Adjustment about 10 or 11 years ago. Unfortunately, that approval has lapsed, requiring us to come back for reapproval. But since that time, the use has been 
added as a permitted use, which is why we're in front of this board instead of back in front of the Board of Adjustment. I expect to present two or three witnesses. I'm going to present um, Doug Hoffman, who is a vice president of the company that is going to be the operator of the veterinary clinic and is, in fact, operating the existing one on the adjacent property. And I also have our engineer, Mike Ford. Uh, if a question comes up, I also have a representative of the contract purchaser who will be the owner of the real estate leasing the property to the operator. Okay. Call your first witness. Have him swear, uh, swear in, please. I do. Thank you. State full name, spelling your last name. Uh, Doug Hoffman, H O F F M A N. What's your address? Uh, 106 Apple Street, Tinton Falls, New Jersey, 07724. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Hoffman, what is your um, affiliation with this project and who do you work for? Um, I'm a veterinarian um, with uh, Compassion First Pet Hospitals. I'm the Vice President of Infrastructure and Facilities uh, and oversee the construction projects. Bring the microphone a little closer to your mouth. Thank you. Uh, oversee the construction projects for all of uh, Compassion First Pet Hospitals. Okay. And I already indicated that Compassion First is operating the pet hospital adjacent to this property. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And what, just uh, briefly, what what is the proposal? In front of the board tonight. So the proposal is that the existing hospital uh, is moved to a larger facility. This is a, a practice that has been growing steadily uh, and is in an aged facility uh, that is in dire need of update. And uh, this new building will allow them to grow and uh, provide better service uh, to all the pets in the community. And I, is it a uh, just a vet office? You call it a hospital? Is it open? This is a 24-hour emergency uh, and referral practice. So this is one that will uh, get referrals from other hospitals in the area uh, for specialists who work there in different uh, disciplines as well as 24-hour uh, emergency care. And what types of animals will be the patients at this facility? 99% are dogs and cats. You have a small percentage of what we call pocket pets, like rabbits and ferrets and small pets like that. Will there be any horses, cows, or other large animals? There will not be any large animals. Okay. Um, let's, can I have the red room? Please use the microphone up there if you want to stand. <clears throat> Where do you want me? Right on the wall there, spine. Uh, no, that's the view the architecture. Oh. Uh, Mr. Hoffman, I understand that you're not an architect, but this is an architectural rendering that's been prepared by the architect. And i just like you to, to briefly describe the, uh, the proposed hospital facility. Okay. Uh, so this is a hospital that is uh, just shy of 10,500 square feet. Uh, am I part of the corner? Should we mark that exhibit? Oh. Are they going to bring that into testimony? Um, yeah. This, this practice uh, will... Because of the... Uh, Hold on one second, please, we mark that. We're going to mark that A1. 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 Yep. Can we get an understanding, Mr. Ford, what A1 is? Should I swear in, Mr. Ford? Yeah, yeah. yeah might as well swear at it. Can you tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth, so Yes, I do. Michael Ford, F-O-R-D, Van Cleef Engineering, 32 Brower Lane, Hillsborough, New Jersey. Thank you. Marking is a bit A1 which is entitled Compassion First uh, Preliminary uh, Elevation View uh, Sheet Number A2.1, dated uh, September 5th, 2017. It's a color rendering. Okay, continue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're good to go now. So uh, this is uh, the facility 
that we have in the way this facility will will sit on the property uh, this is the what would be considered the back of the building but facing the street uh, this is the front of the building uh, here with the parking lot where patients will enter uh, and then you have both sides of the hospital this is the side that faces uh, the the wooded area and this is the side that faces uh, this the uh, driveway that pay that uh, clients will drive to get to the parking lot now among the variances that we're requesting is, is a side yard variance um, would it be possible to make the building narrower and perhaps deeper to avoid that variance in, in this case, this building already uh, for a veterinary hospital is considerably lengthened uh, and narrowed as is, which, you know, if we tried to narrow this much more, we would significantly reduce the flow of the hospital and uh, the ability to care for the patients just because of the length of the hospital and uh, how it would sort of, in, in a way, crunch uh, the, uh, the flow. And, and exam rooms and treatment rooms and so on. You, met, you mentioned that the uh, entrance will be in the rear of the building. Uh, would it be possible to put the entrance in the front of the building? To, to put the entrance in the front of the building would require the building to be pushed back off of the street considerably. And given that this is a 24-hour facility and patients are coming in an emergency situation, the fear is that they could not find the building readily. Uh, as well as putting the parking lot in the front uh, by the street puts the patients at risk for getting hit by a car if they got loose uh, or, you know, got away from their owners. Um, so the safest aspect for these patients uh, is to actually enter uh, from the, the back side of it and have the building closer to the street so that it can be seen readily in an emergency. Could the building be reorganized as a two-story building from for the size of the building being just over 10,000 square feet uh, to try and put two stories on this severely impacts uh, patient care uh, putting different uh, parts of the hospital on two floors requiring a lot of patients that are under anesthesia or on gurneys to have to be uh, moved or put into an, you know elevators under anesthesia is not in the best interest of the pets uh, for a practice, this, a hospital this small, uh, one story is, is definitely ideal. Mr. Chairman, that, that's the end of my basic directive, this witness, um, although I may have to call him back to deal with some of the comments in your professional reports. Uh, any questions from any, no, Michael? Okay. Not at the I have a question. Obviously, the, um, I was involved on the, on the other board when you first came to it um, and we granted you the variance to put up that temporary and they said two years and it would be probably plenty of time now we're obviously expired Correct. what is the delay the delay was the uh, previous owner of the property could not finance the new new uh, hospital build and since that time uh, new ownership of the property is, is occurred, which is, is now allowing it to be financed. And you have enough financing in place to immediately start building this facility? The goal is that once approval is given, uh, that uh, the, the, we'll start building and hopefully be done by the fourth quarter of 2018. Okay. Any other questions? Is it a knockdown of the other building also, or just? The, the other building, it, it, we're going to move, it'll be a move, a direct, it, that hospital exists. They're, they're moving from that hospital to this hospital, like in a weekend type of thing, because they both have to stay open, and then one will close completely. Okay. Um, the trailer that exists will be removed, um, and the rest of the building we do not own, um, so it's at the disposal of the, the owner of the land. Okay. Uh, we have to open the public again. Motion open. I just, I just want to make sure. So the the lot you're currently is a different owner than the than the lot you're going to build on, or is it the same? The the property that is owned the, the hospital right now is owned by I believe it's T and T Realty. Is that correct? Is correct. Okay. Um, this new piece of land 
his being sold to the current developer. Okay. That's what um, he's retaining ownership of that <coughs> that parcel. Gotcha. Just want to make sure I was clear. Thanks. The yeah. Michael, David, I'm sorry. Yeah, the as the chairman said, the approval for the temporary trailer has expired. Uh, is it the intention to come in and, and get a, an extension, perhaps, of the permission to put that? Right now, that trailer is there illegally. Okay. Um, that would be the intention. If that's what's required, we'd certainly do that. You would have to go to the Board of Adjustment for that. Okay. We can't grant that. Okay. I understand. Okay. Um, oh, motion to open to public. <coughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any questions for this witness from the public on this testimony? Yep. Just, just on his toast. I have a long comment about this. I've well, it's actually. I've been neighbor there. I'm there for 20 years. Okay. This, you have a chance at the end to make a general comment. The question would be just for the witness and whatever testimony he gave. Yep, come up to the microphone, just state your name and your address, and then ask the question. Um, Janet Leopardo. Spell your last name, please. L-E-O-P-A-R-D-O. Your address? 208 U.S. Highway 206, Willsboro. Mr. White, can you lower that for her a little bit? Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we've dealt with uh, many um, professionals that are, you know, lawyers and, and owners through the years. But um, as it stands now, we still, my husband still remembers the conversation with the owner of uh, doc, uh, Dr. Schwartz Jr., where he promised if he was to build on this property, uh, he was going to sell us the property after they moved. And we've which, had no which communication. Which property is that? Where the, where the hospital is now. The existing property. Where yes. the, not where the new building is, but where the existing hospital yes, is. Yes, because okay. we own the L-shaped property behind it. Okay. Flag, flag property. Um, but this... This owner, well, this application is is a different owner. Different so, owner. and they're not retaining the ownership of the old building. It's they're just leaving it. So you still should have the opportunity, for, if I understand your question correctly, well, to because we've had no communication with them recently. I want to make it clear, clear to TNT that that we are interested in purchasing the property once once the move has occurred. Okay. We're not we, TNT. So I know. So, thank you. And okay, because because um, we never we didn't know even whether they're going to. Previously, the last time we spoke to the lawyers and the architects, people that they were going to have both open and they were going to walk back and forth between both properties, bet between you know walking over our driveway, which is a big liability. So um, that's that's why we're here. Okay. No, I, I, I don't think it's really something for this that this. Well, uh, hold, hold on. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, your last comment. I hope, I hope, uh, sir, uh, you, so I just want to make sure I understand the question. So are, are you saying that between the two property where the two buildings are, that is, that's your, pro that, yeah, I own a flag oh, lot. I need, I need to swear you yeah, I'm sorry. I do. Your name, please? Andy or Andrew Leopardo, Jr. Okay. That's it. Thank you. But so so the, the there's a the driveway in the middle is your property. Yes, sir. So and and in order to tra traverse between buildings, they're they're crossing over your property. for the last 20 years. Yes. Well, that's a com that's a question you you can ask the applicant about how they intend to, to deal with that. Nobody ever came to my <laughs> door. Nobody ever called us, never a letter. They've been trespassing for the last 20 years. 
um, there's all kinds. You want me to go into details? No, no, I, I, mean, I, I, I don't want the, They've the, been the, so violating my, okay. hold on, I will, I will say this. Okay. They've been violating my rights. I'm a little bit nervous right now. They don't Take need to time. be nervous. My only, question, my only question to you is, if there's an issue with the, with the applicant, you really should be addressing your questions to them. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on, on your issue, because at first I didn't think there was a the basis for you to come up and ask questions, but clearly there's something you can you can discuss with the applicant if you oh, so yes. choose now. Go ahead. You want to ask him? If you have a question, because he's obviously well, the owner of the new, of the other property. Apparently, he doesn't. Not they don't not even the recognize owner, us yeah. as, yeah. as being there. And uh, there's, we need to sit down and talk. It's a long, drawn-out thing. Mr. Chairman, I would point out that this application is for a hospital that would be self-contained on its lot and therefore would not interfere with Mr. Leopardo's property. And if there's some issue with the way it's currently being operated, that's not really relevant to the application that's right. before the board. Okay. Well, well you're gonna be not, you indicated not you'd be totally. We, we'd be, we will be, be moving. We will be closing the one that, that, that causes his problem. We will have our parking lot, our driveway, everything on one lot. It won't interfere with his property because nobody will have any reason to go onto his property because we'll all be on one lot. You, you'll have a different driveway to well, this new hospital. Yeah. So it'll be to the other side. It won't interfere at all. Correct. And, of course, Mr. Ford will testify to, to the site plan design. So maybe we, we, once the, Mr. Ford does a testimony, you could ask or be more king of that. Yeah. I just wanted to, we, I think Eric was going to make comments. I wanted to make sure. I'm well, I mean, we have an issue now. The application, as the planner has indicated, currently is occupying a property in violation of township ordinances and their approval. Um, so while it may, Counselor, it may not necessarily directly impact, it clearly indirectly impacts because your client for all intents and purposes now is in a situation where they are, for lack of a better phrase, homesteading. They're basically occupying a property, and occupying a situation where they're not supposed to. I would suggest that whatever resolution we come to with this application addresses the, the issue of the current application, the current Situation. situation thank you Frank um, in terms of while the board cannot grant or deny the continuation of the trailer there are conditions related to such and I think frankly since everybody is sort of here it might make sense to have at least a short conversation with the neighbors relative to what you're planning on doing because the intent for the, that you're giving to this board is you plan on having this done in a year and the situation has gone on for a lot longer than a year. Understand? Do you have any other, you want to sit and come back when the, when the planner has the, the plans up that maybe have some direct questions or? Okay, come on. No, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Where the, the, drive, the new driveway for the veterinarian is, is there going to be a raised curb or anything before the, um, I, the trees that I understand have been, one of the plans showed trees. We're, we're, or a, we're a little a ahead. Bushes before, between our property. Ma'am, can I make a suggestion? I think the applicant's next witnesses the engineer who I'm assuming is going to talk about the site plan and he may be able to address the questions you've got and if he doesn't you can come back up and ask him the questions you want to ask him but I don't think this witness is necessarily the most qualified individual to answer that question thank you okay all right so, so my question is um, Swark agreed to sell me the property so the question is you're you're right back on that right I am not a Red Bank veterinarian. I am a veterinarian. Worked for Compassion First Pet Hospitals. So, the, so Red Bank veterinarian sold it to First what now? Compassion First. Red Bank is owned by Compassion First Pet Hospitals. I'm not a veterinarian with Red Bank Animal Hospital. I know 
Dr. Schwark, but I don't know any about this situation. So you don't know at about all. the details. Then we, we need to discuss it further. And, you know, well, you just don't know. So, so just a couple of things. If I'm, I, I think the arrangement that maybe you have with the seller is something that we can't help you with at this board, nor I think the applicant. Well, I can. just wanted to bring it out in front of the board. Uh, uh, there is a there okay. is a huge problem. That's, uh, th that's fair, and, and that's why we wanted to make sure we got your issue on the table because obviously, if there's use of a driveway, we would want to make sure that's that's resolved. As far as the sale, I really think that's something you got to go deal with the current owners on that. All this, right. Thank this, you. Yeah, you know, whatever you were promised. That that's not something we can deal with. But I think the other questions you may have, I'd simply wait for the next yeah. witness, and then you can ask them. That. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Hoffman? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, are we going to ask Mr. Ford to give us his qualifications since he I think we'll let him slide. <laughs> Unless you really want to go through it, just. No, yeah, thank you. Your mom's not watching today, so. <laughs> <laughs> no. Should I put up the next exhibit? I think everybody's yeah, anxious. Yeah, go ahead. Do yeah. you want to mark, mark yes. Michael Hoang away tomorrow? We're going to mark this A2. Okay. Do you have any other exhibits you're planning on marking or just this one? No, I think well, this will be it. Okay. Because otherwise we'd simply mark them now and, and yeah. cut down the travel time. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, A2 is a uh, colorized version of the site plan that was submitted as part of the application. It shows the proposed conditions um, with the access to Route 206, the new building in beige, the parking to the rear of the new building, and uh, just to the north on 206 is the existing vet hospital. Uh, and then uh, the Leopardo's residence is uh, what I'm referring to here, which is in back of the existing vet hospital. Mr. Ford, for the purpose of the record, and I don't want to intrude on council's question, can you indicate what the access point is to the current applicate to the current hospital on 206? Now I'm going to. I can give you an existing condition rendering. I'm going to have to. Tell you, Mike. A three. Because color is good, colorized version. All right. Thank you. A, A3 is a uh, colorized version of the existing features plan that uh, was submitted as part of the application uh, showing in color the exist the pre-existing condition on the subject site lot 33 which uh, you know just uh, uh, to the north of the site is the existing that building and then what was pre-existing on the site that, to, that is to be developed was a residential dwelling and some out structures and a stone parking area. And to answer your question, the access right now really straddles the property line between Mr. Leopardo's property and that <coughs> existing residence, which has since been removed after the 2008 site plan approval for this project. And actually, construction actually started on this site. So that's the existing conditions. There's actually a third driveway uh, that was removed uh, on this property uh, that accessed the residence. And then um, to the north, there's an existing driveway that services uh, a front entrance to the existing um, vet clinic. So at the end of the day, when this is developed, there would be a separate driveway for the new site, and there was a DOT permit for that. 
Uh, we're seeking a renewal of that permit now. The existing driveway that I just referred to directly in front of the existing vet clinic would exist. And then the existing driveway in the Leopardo's flag lot portion of their property, because they're a flag lot. This is the flagpole stem, and then their flag lot would remain as well. And that's actually reflected on the current DOT plans for this area. Mr. Ford, it appears on that colorized drawing you're going to make some kind of buffer to delineate between the new driveway and the Leopardo's driveway? Yes. Uh, to answer, uh, I think, someone's question, uh, the proposed condition would be uh, driveway access for the new vet clinic with a landscape buffer between the driveway and the property line. And then beyond that property line would be the Leopardo's flag law, law portion. And uh, as part of our landscaping requirements, we have a tree mitigation plan. And you can see a substantial portion of the tree mitigation is being proposed within that 20-foot buffer between the driveway and the property line to the north. I have a question. Sure. Uh, while we're on the existing conditions, yeah. is that lot presently being used for any parking for the existing veterinary practice? Yes. Yes, and we represented that when we went to the Board of Adjustment in 2014, I think it was, for the temporary trailer. And, and I think, you know, somebody can speak to how long that's been going on, but that's, that's been the condition for some time. And I assume then that during construction that parking disappears. Correct. And how will that, will be, how will that be handled? In terms, the, the other practice will continue, I, I imagine? Yes. But with less parking. Right. We may have to address that later. And that. <laughs> there are obviously voices coming from the audience, which I assume are answering questions for the purposes of the record, not only as a stenographer, but the troublemaker in the green shirt. Um, why don't we have that individual come that, up that, at, least that, be, at least be sworn in for the was, purposes? That was Mr. Hoffman who, who previously testified, Hoffman? but okay. I understand you, you want him to come up and No, say well, the answer is the, the record indicates it was Mr. Hoffman. But if, for all intents and purposes, counsel, if we're going to have, we need to have people up at the mics. Okay. The, the, the uh, um, I think, overall uh, answer to a lot of these questions is that the uh, result of this site plan, should it be approved, would be to resolve a lot of these issues. The, the temporary parking would go away. The individual driveways would be reestablished. Uh, the existing vet clinic with the temporary use trailer that has gone past its time, albeit because of financial issues and funding for the expansion, all those issues will be resolved and, and and I think be improved and, and uh, addressed um, as part of a, the development of this project. It's really time that's it's taken to get to this point that has let that situation continue. So, um, site planning. All right, I've discussed the access um, as far as outside agencies. Um, we had all the approvals previously from the outside agencies, including the DOT permit for the driveway, uh, subsequent to the 2008 site plan approval by the Board of Adjustment. None of those aspects of the application have changed, and we've gone back and got uh, secured uh, reapprovals from all the outside agencies, including soil erosion sediment control, the county. Uh, the DNR Canal Commission has issued a letter supporting the application and only condition they've asked for is a copy of this board's resolution of approval, which is typical of their applications, so they deem it incomplete until you get the township approval, obviously. So we need to provide them with a copy of a resolution of approval this board may grant. But uh, other than that, the DNR Canal Commission has already reviewed and found satisfactorily to, to their uh, standards uh, the stormwater management system for the proposed project. 
Um, we've also uh, made an application, as I stated earlier, back to DEP for a renewal of the driveway access permit. That is pending. Uh, that, you mean the DOT? I'm sorry, DOT. Uh, we've made an access, or actually we've made an application also for a renewal of our freshwater wetland <coughs> permit. And I could state uh, that was a suggestion by your environmental commission when we met with them. Um, but there are only this isolated wetland area at the extreme rear of the property, and we're not proposing any development back there. So there's no uh, proposed activity or impacts to the wetlands. Um, but we have, as was suggested by the Environmental Commission, uh, requested a renewal of that wetland letter of interpretation. Uh, as far as impacts, as I stated earlier too, uh, there was the um, 2008 approval, um, as a uh, prior applicant uh, referred to, and everybody's familiar with the State's Permit Extension Act. So that approval didn't expire until 2016, and actually the uh, applicant, uh, or the, the prior owner of the property and the Red Bank Veterinarian Clinic started construction. That is, they removed the existing structures, and I'm referring to A3, uh, they uh, put in a construction access tracking pad that you can see now uh, along Route 206, uh, cleared all the area that's to be cleared, and it's, it's not uh, a substantial amount of clearing beyond what was already cleared as part of the residence that existed there, and they established all the soil erosion and sediment control uh, elements, the silt fence. So you can see on the site now that it's basically prepped for the what would have been the next step to start uh, the site improvements themselves, the access driveway, which will be curbed and paved. Uh, there'll be no ability with the curb driveway to uh, go anywhere beyond uh, the access. So there wouldn't be an, an ability from a, for a vehicle other than driving over a curb to get into that landscaped area between our property and the neighbor's property. Um, public utilities, the site has existing sanitary sewer actually on the site that would be service the new uh, facility as well as public water. Landscaping, we provided the buffer along between the new driveway and the Leopardo's flag lab portion of their driveway as well as screening along the rear of the property uh, and along the driveway and our neighbors to the south. Um, there is, uh, as was stated at the onset, uh, two bulk variances that are part of this application. It's in the uh, I-1 uh, zone, but we're required to adhere to the I-2 zone standard because we front on Route 206, which requires a wider lot, a 300-foot lot width where the existing conditions uh, about 160 feet, so that's an existing condition, um, but technically we need that variance. And you can see that this is a property that's long and deep. This is over a thousand feet here, this property line between this site and the Leopardo's property to the north, lot 33B. Uh, then there's a second technical variance, and that is with regards to uh, building setback where 50 feet is required along our southern boundary immediately adjacent to the detention basin on the industrial building site to the south of us, we've uh, requested relief for a 40-foot side, side yard uh, where 50 is, re is, is required. We're proposing 40, and that is consistent and not any different than that prior approval, albeit that we know that prior approval is expired, so we're uh, consistent with that same relief request. There were also design waivers that were part and parcel to the prior application and they've been carried forth and we're requesting them this evening as part of this renewal approval. And they are with regards to technical design standards in the parking area. Nine by 18 parking space sizes are proposed where 10 by 20 are the uh, design standard in the township and then an access aisle of 25 feet where 30 is required. Uh, there's also uh, a request or a requirement technically for these industrial zones that you have a loading space. 
Um, we're not proposing any loading space. We don't anticipate in the, uh, we've had discussions with the, the, the new owners and new uh, operators, Compassion First, that uh, are consistent with the, the current or prior Red Bank veterinarian use as well as Dr. Schwartz's use, and that is that they don't anticipate any tractor trailer deliveries. <coughs> it would all be small size, uh, typical UPS uh, box truck type deliveries. And then as was testified uh, to by uh, Mr. Hoffman, there's not an expectation that there would any be any, a need for any large trailers to bring patients even to this site. So we're asking for relief for the provisions uh, of a loading space. We do have uh, an on-site uh, trash enclosure that would be provided, and that is uh, opposite the Leopardus site, our nearest neighbor, which is a residential use in, a, in an industrial zone, but we've provided for the trash enclosure as far away from their property, just off our parking lot area, and that would be within a fenced-in area consistent with your town standard requirements, uh, a, a solid wood fence around that enclosure. Also, with regards to um, mechanical equipment and utilities, uh, the building wouldn't have any uh, equipment on the roof, and the as far as uh, like AC uh, units, they are all proposed along the south side of the property between the building and our neighbor to the south, which is that industrial park detention basin. There is part of those utilities, uh, and this is uh, um, really uh, a, a, you know, an obvious need now with our recent national uh, um, catastrophes with the hurricanes, there is proposed as part of this 24-hour emergency vet clinic uh, emergency generator, and that again would also be proposed along that southern side of the building between the building and the industrial uh, park detention basin. Uh, screened and not visible from uh, our neighbors to the north or Route 206. We're provoke, preserving the existing wooded area along this southern boundary. And then there's no intention or plans for immediate development of the rear portion of the property. But obviously, because this is a, a substantial size property, there could be future development there. And in part of good planning, we've shown on the plan conceptually how potentially in the future the driveway could be extended to service some other development at the rear of the property and certainly that would be the subject of a separate application that would come back before the board for approval. Um, there was also a condition of the 2008 uh, Board of Adjustment approval which actually has been perfected and impacted or uh, implemented and that was a request for a cross access easement through this property so that you know shared driveway access or emergency access could be uh, provided for and that um, emergency access or that ac cross access ac cross access <laughs> cross access. access easement has been recorded thank you i'm getting dry <laughs> If that's possible for an engineer. Yeah, really. <laughs> Mr. White, anything? Uh, should I, conditions of? I Mr. Ford and I have spoken about my letter. This has already been through our, under a heavier Bill. review before. It's not close enough. Mr. Ford and I have spoke prior to the meeting. Um, basically, as we are all well aware, especially the chairman, that we've already seen this through to the zoning board and was under construction. So we had minimal comments. Um, one thing I think I'd like Mr. Ford to get on the record would be tree mitigation. Tree mitigation, yes. Uh, we uh, have provided for tree mitigation. Uh, there was a question about the calculations for the tree mitigation. We'll address that to Mr. White's satisfaction and likely implement the 1.5% um, maximum threshold for that tree mitigation requirement and we'll uh, address it to Mr. White's satisfaction. The economic hardship waiver. The economic, economic hardship, hardship waiver. waiver, yeah. Okay. And that would, uh, we're not proposing any less trees than what's there now or what was part of the prior approval. 
all the other comments that are minor engineering items, you can take care of in the plans. That won't really affect anything. Okay. Perhaps maybe I could also, when, as we turn to Mr. Maskey, uh, address the site lighting. Okay. Um, one of the comments, and, and, uh, and it's in uh, Mr. White's report, is to provide a um, detailed Isolux foot candle uh, analysis. Um, obviously, you'll see by the site plans you received as part of this application, they date back to 2008, 2006, and we've carried forth all the different revisions. One of the things that's happened over that time period is rather than just showing the limits of, say, a one point or point one foot candle uh, exposure at the ground, now we're providing in other applications as well detailed point analysis, and Mr. White has asked for that. We'll uh, provide that as uh, any condition of approval this board may grant, and um, that would also carry with it uh, some relief, I'll say, in the form of waivers from the economic or the architectural design overlay standards. Um, they reference uh, light poles. Uh, maximum spacing of 60 feet or actually have 80 foot spacing and even to put a light in this island and this island within the parking lot the spacing between them is over 60 feet um, and then uh, so we asked for a relief uh, for that layout of lighting they're 15 foot high standard shoebox type light fixtures albeit they would also uh, be upgraded I think the design standards reference using um, metal highlight lights, which are like the white light, as opposed to the high pressure sodium, which is more like a yellow light. But now, uh, and on this application as well, it's likely that we would not use even the metal highlight, we'd use the LED lights, the more uh, energy efficient lighting. But that would also still be, I think, carry um, or, or be in com general compliance with the intent of the ordinance or design overlay standards, and that is by providing a white light, not a yellow light. Bill, did you get a chance to, um, did you talk to Mr. Ford about a revised traffic report? Yes. I don't anticipate it being much different, or actually it was submitted. Yes. Okay. So we're fine. It's, it's good. Yes. He, he touched all the bases. Okay. Right. Mike, just wondering what, with the parking in the back, is is there a reason we can't go to the bigger, bigger spots with the wider? Uh, like there's yeah, I mean, we have more land. Uh, it's really, really was, you know, the, it's adequate for their layout and, and their you know, customers. I'll say in, in all the towns I, you know, work in, most of them are, and even the residential site improvement standards for all residential projects recognize the 9 by 18 space and the 25 foot access aisle. So uh, that's sufficient for that. And I think it was coupled with, you know, trying to not provide more pavement where we didn't need pavement. Right now we're providing for stormwater runoff with dry wells in front of the property. Uh, so we, we could have made the spaces bigger, but that would have had the adverse impact of maybe greater disturbance, a bigger area, we would have had to expand all the access aisles and go back further. Uh, you wouldn't have been able to fit as many parking spaces in an aisle, a row because it, it's a narrow lot. So we may have had, actually had to add a row of spaces too. So, so that's the, it's a balancing act. Yeah. yeah. It's not a high turnover use. It's, have you ever been to the vet? I have been to yeah. one, Red Bank. Unfortunately, yes. and yeah. you're there for a period of time. It's not like you're going to Home Depot, pick up a couple of floors and a piece of sheetrock, and you're in and out. With, and which normally you'll see larger vehicles there too for the Home Depot yeah. type uh, big boxes. Sure. This is you're coming to a regular family car and you're taking your animal, and you're there for a good period of time. <laughs> <laughs> and how many spaces are required versus provided? Yes, we we comply with the ordinance. We're required to have 36. We have 40. So we're a little over, yeah. I have questions about like Mr. Mr. Maskey, you have something before I? Well, yeah, you're gonna go through my comments, Mike? Uh, yeah, sure. Right. I can, uh, so I talked about lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not proposing any street lights that would be uh, under G, that would be um, owned and maintained by the public. These would be all private lights. 
Uh, they're all, and I already stated that uh, we're at 15 foot mounting height which is, uh, I think, recognized by the standards that there may be higher mounting heights in, in parking areas. Uh, and again, we'll provide that foot candle analysis to demonstrate that we don't have any uh, adverse glare onto the neighbors, especially our neighbors uh, to the north, while also uh, satisfying the township ordinance of the um, lighting required for parking lots and driveways. Um, I've spoken to the driveway and parking lot design. They are design waivers for the uh, reduction in the space sizes themselves in the access aisles. Uh, with regards to stormwater runoff, um, as Mr. White has said, we've kind of really gone uh, at this for a number of years and uh, went back to the Delaware and Raritan Canal Commission, which included, um, uh, albeit not visible on the renderings, but a uh, um, an upgrade to the prior stormwater management uh, layout, which includes now qual quality control, not just quantity. There's actually going to be a water quality measure as part of the uh, uh, stormwater management uh, that's already been reviewed and found satisfactory to the DNR Canal Commission. Um, let me go back. I've spoken to the DOT and the access to the site. Uh, we recognize that this parcel of land is in that section of the proposed future Route 206 improvements in Hillsborough, which I'll call the middle section. The north section by Duke Estates and Duke Farms has been completed. The south section, the bypass is going to happen. I understand in 2018 construction. And this is in that middle section between those two sections, which I understand from my contact already with DOT as part of the uh, access driveway permit uh, is in uh, the design stage that they've actually, the, the Trenton has funded the design. And I believe all the parcels, including the parcel along the front of this property, the takings have been acquired. Yeah, just on that point, Mike. Uh, yes. And the reason I put it in, uh, this section of the road is actively being designed. We've seen some, some preliminary designs for it. What we're trying to avoid is a situation that you were involved in, Mike, with the All-American Senior Housing that was built. Uh, the access group at DOT doesn't talk to the design group. So the access folks gave the uh, permission to put utilities in certain places and access to the senior development. The design guys came in and said, no, 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 you can't do that. And it was, it was a lot to get through. People had to go down to Trenton to straighten it out. We've met with DOT. This is actively under design. Uh, we would feel much more comfortable if you got some sort of sign off from the design folks, not just the access folks, that say, yes, I mean, I don't think it'll impact it, right. but we don't want, and I'm sure you don't want to go through what you went through with them on the other project. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, um. Because they're two different groups, you know, it's. Typical. Right. Different ends of the hallway. And we actually have already been to both groups because when we initially submitted for the minor access permit, they uh, had, uh, I think, a, a, a technical snafu and sent it down to Trenton as if it were a major access permit, but now it's back in minor. So both groups are actually administratively aware of it already. And this uh, site is at a location um, where uh, we understand the future condition will be right in, right out only. This will be uh, divided, will to be a divider. Kind of concrete by divider with two lanes, north and southbound lanes, in each direction in front of this property, and and we understand that that's coming. And we'll, we'll communicate clearly to DOT what our intent is, and make sure we're not having an adverse impact on the the uh, and cooperate with them uh, with regards to the future improvements of that middle section. Um, architectural design Let's just back of up. the building. Let's finish yep. the, the general comments first, if you will. Um, sure. You got A, B, and C already covered. We touched on D, the fact that the trailer is, uh, has overstayed its permit and it's going to have to be addressed. But also in relationship to the existing uh, practice I brought up before, you're removing parking uh, that is currently on the site where you want to build a new building, is that going to cause a parking deficiency on the existing practice, which will require a variance from 
on another application to the Board right. of Adjustment. Right. We've discussed that, uh, and this is, all, albeit a temporary situation until they move over into the new building, but certainly an issue we'd have to deal with during the construction time period. There's been discussion about providing for, I mean, this, this parking lot can be established and there could be a separation of parking uh, for people going to the practice and people working on this building. <coughs> and there's also been discussion uh, with the current operators of the existing uh, vet clinic facility of temporary use of this existing industrial building's parking lot just to the north of us that's not utilized now. Mr. Chairman. And that would be temporary. That would be. And that has to do with the building that really is not part of this application, but again, we recognize they're, they're parking on this lot now. We've now touched the, the proverbial third rail. Third rail, right. Mr. Ford, if, if I may, and, I, and you've been here long enough to know that I usually don't ask a lot of questions to the board because they don't like me asking a lot of questions, but let's start. The current site, the one that is being proposed to be developed, is being used for what right now? Okay. Uh, there is an existing driveway uh, between the existing uh, that clinic facility mm -hmm. and the lot that's the, the, the location of the new proposed facility, mm -hmm. which is partially on this lot, partially on the Leopardo's lot, and then partially on the lot to the north. And there's, gra there's gravel area here where that, uh, you can see now on the, the pre-existing condition, this building's been removed, but there's still gravel in this area where some uh, there's parking in front of the vet clinic, but that that's, uh, doesn't handle all the people that are there at any given time. So there's some people that park in this gravel area now. All right. So you are so people who are parking now temporarily on the current applicant site are crossing over that driveway in order to get to the current the current veterinary hospital. Is that correct? Correct. And from what I gather. There is no access easement to do so. Which begs the next question. As you plan on developing the current applicant's parcel, how are you going to handle the parking vis-a-vis -vis the same issue, i.e. crossing the neighbor's driveway without approval, as a question of because as you indicated, there's at least three different possible owners of this driveway, and we're not sure which part is which. Are you aware of whether or not the applicant intends or has, and I think I know the answer, to get a cross-access easement with the current property owner in order to continue to do what they have apparently been doing without approval for a period of time? Uh, sounds like a legal question to me. <laughs> Well, the yeah, point is you... you no, I don't, I don't know the answer to that, that question, but I, I understand. And the other part is from what I gather from, the, from your client's prior witness, this is at least another year in the offing. Um, I'm going to suggest to the board and that as a condition of this approval, if it is granted, that prior to any approvals or any necessary permits, that there be a cross-access easement. This is above and beyond the need, and Mr. Maskey raised the issue earlier as a condition, that the applicant get another approval from the zoning board relative to this, and I put this in quotes, temporary situation. Exactly. Well, that doesn't make sense for us to approve it without their approval first, or? The approval can be conditioned upon, or you can all hold this application off pending the outcome of another application to the zoning board. Quite honestly, it doesn't look like, in my opinion, <coughs> feasible to park north of you in that parking lot because there's no way to get from that parking lot to the property, correct? You'd have uh, to walk on 206? No, I, I haven't had those discussions, with, the, but um, there's someone with that's here that maybe could speak to the issue. There's been discussions from what I understand with the neighbor 
it may require like a temporary pathway between the two of them without having to walk along 206, but that would, right. With seems, seems to be the magic word of the evening is temp temporary. temporary. Okay. It's, it's obvious that there's a parking problem or a potential parking problem. So I think at this point, I'm gonna, uh, I our, our neighbor here is raising his hand. He wants to make a comment, so I think I could let him ask a question. Unless the board has Unless any he, initially of this witness, they can. I think it's probably going to be the same. Uh, just, just maybe one question. From the standpoint of of making sure that there's people that are coming to the new facility are, are going into the right location. How do you intend to create some kind of signage or or uh, anything so that they know? they're utilizing the right driveway is there anything right. planned at this point yeah actually uh that was in mr maskey's review there's no signage on the site plans now okay. uh mr delcor there uh is an existing sign out there now red bank veterinarian clinic sign um so that would have to be removed when the other facility is is decommissioned and we've discussed in preparation for this evening's meeting that the applicant uh would develop a sign package and that could include directory signs. Okay. But, but we don't have a detail for that this evening. Uh, the intent would be that it would comply with your signed ordinance, that we wouldn't ask for any relief. Certainly we haven't. Um, but that would be the intent. So you'd, you'd submit the sign package at a later date? Is that what you're Correct. Saying? Hard to approve a site plan without seeing signage. It, well, particularly because of access, right. know, as, as the question just came yeah. up, you want to make sure it's visible. It's not to be confused with the existing veterinary site or yeah. with the property owner next door. So some sense of signage, at least uh, access signs, identification right. signs would be helpful. Yeah, the, the prior uh, application included a sign on the front of the building actually so you had a real focal of this is this is the the destination on the building and that was discussed again with the applicant to see you know in preparation for this evening's meeting following through with that same proposal but Mr. again Ford, we don't at, a, at a sure curiosity the proposed driveway is how close to the current property owners driveway it's uh, about 30 feet south of the property line. That would be this this location right here, mm -hmm. and that's that site that ch that hasn't changed from the prior DOT permit. Yeah. And how close is the current driveway to the property owner's driveway? It's a it's a wide gravel area here, and extends like we've discussed already over multiple properties. Okay. Um, so you have approximately how many cars parked in the let's call the gravel lot on a, on a normal d basis versus what you have parked in your front lot? Yeah, I think that that would be an answer Maybe or we, a question for the. I was going to get, get a scope of how many cars we're looking to relocate here. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Hoffman, somebody in the back and testify. Come on up front. Because and... obviously we got to talk about employees too, right? And, and we're looking at about 20 cars. 20 cars. That would be employee employee cars. And that's who parks over there now. Correct. So you really your your customers are parking in front of the store. They are. Or the hospital, and it's Correct. just employee parking that you're looking to relocate. Correct. Which oh. is why it makes feasible potentially using that other lot and, and creating a pathway because uh, that's what the employees would be used. We wouldn't have clients do that. I think we're going to have to have some more detail uh, on what you're going to do. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Cass. Um, you're talking there's 20 cars using the gravel parking lot now, you said? It, 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 at a maximum. All right, so we've got 20 orphan cars now on Route 206, and we have no nothing in front of us that shows us where those cars are going in the year or so that it's going to take to build this new site. 
I mean, I don't know how the board can handle I think, that. I, I think that this all, quite honestly, Councilor, needs to be addressed and, and, come, and, and buttoned up before we could really, in my opinion, rule on it. Or, and plus you have the existing condition of the, if I could be wrong, the, the expiration of the variance on where you're operating now that you need to even stay there for the next year to two years that you have to get an approval for. And then possibly a cross access easement to allow to get across the, your neighbor's driveway if, if by chance you come to an agreement with them to park the cars next door. A lot, a lot of things up in the air that we can't even decide upon. Well, the, the existence, I understand that the, the board is concerned about what happens during construction. Actually, Council, the board is concerned about what's going on now. You've got an applicant before this board who's in violation of a variance approved granted by another board, but you're now before this one. You're ostensibly now asking the planning board to correct a situation that's been going on for a while, leaving aside the neighbor's concerns, and I'm not minimizing those, but leaving aside that, basically what we have is we've got a very small band and a very large wound here It needs to be addressed and simply getting this board's approval of this application doesn't address the current and the foreseeable issues. And, and to, to some extent, those concerns are pro appropriate for the planning board in connection with this application. To some extent, that they go to enforcement of the zoning ordinance, which is not this board's concern. If I, I'm, I'm not trying to minimize the need to comply with the zoning ordinance. I, I would suggest that you may be technically correct, but there's a, there's a line I'm sure we both know, which is be careful what you wish for, you may get it. If the suggestion is that the board has certain powers it doesn't have relative to zoning enforcement, I would suspect and I can't speak for the planning and zoning director who's sitting to my left, as to what might happen regarding that enforcement, which presents a whole nother problem. What we're suggesting is trying to resolve the issue before other things have to happen that may be more problematic than simply this application. Well, certainly from the, the discussion so far, it, the approval that Exist, currently exists for the use of the trailer on the adjacent property is something that will have to be pursued before the other board. Because this, this board, <coughs> e, e, A, doesn't have the power to grant it, and That's B, th it's not before this board in a properly noticed application. Um, so that will have to proceed before the Board of Adjustment in any event to deal with the enforcement issue. Um, as far as the temporary construction issue as to where, where the cars yeah. that currently park on this site will park during the construction of this site, that is a matter that this board can concern itself with. Right, including the existing temporary parking that from what I gather was never approved to exist in the first place. But that, it, any, any parking on the site, and any proposal to park on the site on the north presumably would be part of an application to the Board of Adjustment for continuation of the trailer permission because it would continue to be a temporary application and we might as well take care of all of that before, before one board rather than trying to expand this application before this board. <laughs> Correct. However, and I think the chairman's concerns are apropos, is you're now talking about needing a approvals from the zoning board to continue the situation at hand before this board can address the issue of what to do in the future. For example, if the zoning board tomorrow told you you couldn't operate any more on that property, then there's potentially, I assume, a whole other application here. Uh, if the if we were told that we couldn't operate on on the existing property, aside from 
its potential impact on the economics of proceeding, this, if this board were to grant the approval that we're looking for, there's no reason why, other than the economics of the situation, that we couldn't proceed to perfect that approval without regard to what's going on on the other site. In fact, there, well. Well, right, right now, you're having the best of both worlds. You've got a situation on the property with an expired variance, as well as using the current property before you for a use that it's not approved to be used for. Other than that, it's fine. Um, and you're before the board hoping to perfect the application that you can keep that ball in the air while you deal with the, all the other balls in the air because if that one, those fail, then you can at least come back to this one and say, okay, we're now going to construct on this property. And you've got a neighbor who I can, I can tell out of the corner of my eyes is itching to say something that I'm assuming may make this potentially even more problematic. So... I'm just, I think the advice that I'm, that I'm giving here and maybe is just to take care of possible some, some issues before you come back to us so that we have a better understanding as to what the ifs, ands, or buts are instead of, well, we might put something here, we might put something there, they may let us have this, we may let us have that. Because right now there's, we, we can approve a plan and put a bunch of stipulations only on approvals from the, as as our attorney said, from the Board of Adjustment, which basically puts you on a holding pattern anyway until you get such approvals and access easements or whatever. And then without us really even, and then we have this. And, and if the conditions, if any one or any of those conditions is denied, met, the, whole, you have to start that, the whole approval falls apart. Correct. Mr. Chairman, can I ask for a five or ten minute recess? We will take a five, uh, we will reconvene at nine o'clock. Call to order. We're now uh, back in session. It's 9.05. Uh, after a brief recess, uh, the counselor has to talk to his client. So, counselor, we... Mr. Have Chairman, fun. thank you for the courtesy of the recess. Um, I would like to um, present another witness to um, set the record straight about some of the claims that Mr. Leopardo made about uh, use of his property. Um, and then we'd like to discuss going forward with uh, we'll go back to the Board of Adjustment and deal with uh, the issues in front of them. But uh, first place, I'd like to call John Dugan. Sure. Uh, Let's have him swear in, please. Raise your right hand, please. Please do it. I want you to hold you for nothing but the treats to help you go. need the mic, sir. Thank you. Thank you for name spelling your last name. John Dugan, D-U-G-A-N. Your address? 120 Parker Avenue, Little Silver, New Jersey. Have a seat. Mr. Dugan, would you tell the planning board what your relationship to the veterinary hospital is? I uh, had worked for Red Bank Veterinary Hospital prior to working for Compassion First. So I was involved with some of these projects earlier in front of the board, as a matter of fact, the trailer. Mm -hmm. But I have now worked for Compassion First. And are you familiar with the way that the current animal hospital on Jewish <laughs> is operated? I am. Okay. Uh, Mr. Leopardo made a claim about the uh, use of his driveway. Is that, is, were his statements completely accurate? No, they were inaccurate. Uh, I've had numerous discussions with Mr. Leopardo over many years of being involved with this project because the way the property is laid out is that he, Mr. Leopardo uses the property in question as a way to drive and access his property. He does not use his driveway. It's a fact. So when he says that we're approaching on him, he's actually on the property in question here. Excuse me, what, what is it that you do for the hospital? I am the director of uh, infrastructure and, and facilities. I work for under Doug, okay. Dr. Hoffman. Sorry. But I have a longer history here. Can, can you repeat what you, I, I don't, I'm not sure I understood what your, what your, your the, testimony The flag was. property, if you look at it, it's about, I think it's 25 foot wide. I can get up and okay. show sure, no, Yeah, that's fine. If you want. Yes. You can go up. Yeah, sure. Okay. This is probably the better one to show. All right. 
So if this is a property on purple here, the property of the new, new hospital, Mr. Leopardo's driveway is actually right here, going up into here, as these pictures show from above where the cars are presently parked. Mr. Leopardo drives up in here into this property to access his driveway. So it's been a mess for a long time. So for him to imply that we're taking his space, he's actually driving on the wrong place. This project actually is going to solve this problem. This property will be, will be abandoned as a hospital. This will be the new hospital, and Mr. Leopardo can have his driveway where it exists. So, so to me, it's, it solves the problem. Right, but so what you're saying is that he's driving around because you've got client cars parked on his driveway. Not only that, there's about a six-foot drop right here. He, could never, he couldn't drive his car up there. He couldn't drive a tractor trailer up there. So it's a problem that actually building the hospital will solve a problem, actually, if he cooperates. So, so you're not saying that the parking of the cars for the hospital block his driveway. It's the nature of his driveway. Exactly. There's no drive there. You see by the, by the photographs. That's about a six-foot drop here. But for Mr. Leopardo to say no one ever talked to him, I've been talking to him for eight years, trying to solve the problem. <clears throat> so there's no real delineation of the driveways. It's just a big stone, but he's taking a more circuitous route to get to the back. He's taking a, he's taking a stone driveway that we put in place during the trailer to provide parking, which was mm -hmm. approved to put the parking up in the backside there. Mm -hmm. And when that was done, he utilizes that same driveway that we park. It's, it's, a, it's a mutual, it's a problem okay. on this side. This, okay. this project actually solves this. Okay. Um, but I just want to be clear, though. Yes. That, that, uh, so he utilizes your, but, but you're also utilizing Absolutely. his? Yeah, exactly. Okay. There's, 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 yeah, sure. I'm not, but okay. I'm saying to say it's going uh, side. I you were yeah. trying to claim that you were okay. you. Yes, okay, sir. gotcha. Thank you. We're just trying to show that it's, it's not like one side. Correct. Yeah, I mean, and I was going to point that point out that distinction as well, which probably means there's, there's room to work together and figure something out. You would hope so. Right. But, uh, yeah, what he uses probably doesn't, isn't relevant because he's not here for an application, right? I think you're, you know, whether or not you are still going on his driveway at all for any purpose, that's probably the issue that has to get resolved, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Or figured out. And, and it's not like we can, I wouldn't think you could approve something with a condition of approval of something else if we really don't know what that condition would be exactly. It could be worth something working out with him, it could be something with the zoning board. You know, we don't really know based on the various options that have come up. And I think it still doesn't resolve also that you've got the 20 cars that are parked there and those drivers have to technically cross his driveway too. So I guess that's getting back, Councillor, to your issue about an easement, access Always easement. Always helps. Right. So. We still have the issues at hand. I mean, it's, yeah. I don't, I don't think we want to get into who's more no. righter than the other one. I think you guys have a disagreement. I think that let's get it resolved so we can move forward. I, I think, and, and perhaps I'm wrong, but I think the, the, the issues that have been addressed are the, the inter, for the interim condition between tonight and when the application, if it were approved, were fully constructed and the new hospital developed. So the only issue is, is what to do within that interim time. Well, what to do to remedy a situation that is already well beyond when it should have been in the first place. Because this was a variance granted on a temporary situation which has expired, which doesn't, that's why you're here. You're not here because you're here because the, the application and the granting of it expired, which now puts you before us, because in the interim, the zoning has changed to allow veterinary hospitals to be a permitted use, which now makes it a board issue, this board. So you guys need to resolve the, the already existing issue in multiple phases before you come back here to ask this board to try to approve an application that right now has too many, I would suspect, too many moving parts. Correct. And, and obviously we can't, you have another board involved that we can't speak for and what their thoughts are. 
Okay. You, got, you have a private issue between the current applicant, the current landholder, and the current neighbor, separate and apart from what's going on here. Well, because if, if we go before the Board of Adjustment, mm -hmm. and if the Board grants an extension of the temporary permit for the trailer, and if part of, as part of that application we deal with how to deal with parking during the construction phase of this mm -hmm. operation, then all of those issues can be resolved in front of the Board of Adjustment. Right, including and the parking currently, it's not just the parking for the temporary, but the parking for the current which needs to be addressed yesterday because that's the biggest issue right now. You're using a piece of property for temporary parking that has no approval for temporary parking, that isn't permitted in the zone for temporary parking, but that, it's just fine. You got three even, issues even, to even if, even if Mr. Leopardis and his driveway didn't exist, you still have no authority to, to be parking there. For whomever is parking there, whether it's the customers, the employees, the students, or whatever else is going on over there. But the the if you want to separate that issue to the the construction and the current condition, it still is something that can be resolved completely in front of I, the board. Council, I'm not I'm not disagreeing. It, it can be easily resolved before the zoning board. The issue, however, is you've got a more immediate situation that has to be dealt with before you even get your application heard before the zoning board, which is the current use of the current application for a prop for a purpose that it is not permitted to be used for in a situation that is also apparently crossing the rights of another property owner irrespective of who's driving on whose driveway. So I think we're suggesting that the applicant have a conversation with the neighbor to deal with that, and the applicant work with the zoning office before even the zoning board hears the case on how to deal with the temporary parking, which has now become an issue before the township. Correct. Well, we, we are prepared to to have that conversation and make that application. I get a feeling like I'm talking so, to hear myself. So I guess what we're saying the, is the, that go, we suggest, and I'll talk if uh, that you come back with us after that's resolved, and then we well, can not, hear. Well, not just that. A zoning board application does not resolve the current situation regarding the temporary parking. That has to be resolved with the zoning office now. The zoning application may address the issue of the trailer and the future parking relative to the construction, but the current use of the property for a use in which it is not approved for doesn't get resolved simply by filing an application with the zoning board. It's got to be dealt with with the zoning department beforehand. That's what I'm saying, above and beyond a zoning board application, which may resolve the other issues. I, I, I don't want to, to, to continue an argument. We, the, the board has made clear that, that it wants us to resolve these situations before it's going to re, re right. and, and decide our current application. So, we, so I guess that we could, you could ask for a if we would call it a reschedule. Well, continuation, a continuation of the application. Of the application I'm, after just pointing, I'm just pointing out to the applicant, it's my understanding, it. you're going to need more than a zoning board application and a hearing to address the situation relative to the temporary parking. That you're going to have to work with Mr. Maskey's office in the interim. And when all of that is resolved, then feel free to And when to come all back. of that is resolved, which may all be resolved by the zoning board application, and then come on back. We basically need to clean it up. Right. Uh, what, what's, what's legal, what's illegal, which is, sorry, Kaz. We need to clean it up and decide what's, what's currently being done legally or illegally, the trailer, for instance, um, the parking, whether it, it's, it's permitted there or not. Uh, we have to look forward to 
where those 20 cars or so are going to be parked if this application, this particular application were uh, approved. So we need to we need to clean it up, decide what, who has jurisdiction over what, and then proceed from there. Would the applicant be willing to grant an extension at least till the end of the year? Can can we schedule it for another appearance to update you on what's going on? But before then, it's up to you. You want to come back. Uh, on the 12th of October, which is the next board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would rather do that, let you know what, what's going on, see where things last, and then we can address what will go, what will go forward. We have room on the schedule for October 12th? Yes. Okay. Uh, so what we're, asking, what we're asking for, Mr. Chairman, is a motion for the board to continue this hearing until October the 12th without further notice. You're aware. They'll be here on the 12th, so you don't have to be noticed it. Okay, we have a motion for that. So moved. Second. 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 Roll call. Yes, Mr. Weinstein. Yes. Mr. Pieces. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Yes. Mr. Hesitag. Yes. Scova. Yes. Vice Chairman Julian. Yes. Mr. Mandelcor. Yes. Mr. Sirachi. Yes. Mr. Chairman Lapani. Yes. Thank you for your time. We would also suggest the parties talk in the interim. Yes, and we'll see you on the 12th. All right, so um, <clears throat> following down, we have correspondence. Uh, Mr. Maskey, you have something that uh, adopted Ordinance 2017 07, adopted 9 12 17 by Township Committee. That's the, the uh, affordable housing. That's site. the affordable housing that we sent up. Mm -hmm. And then you have your new planner in there. Uh, our next meeting schedule will be a business meeting for September 28th, 2017. Is that still on the schedule? Uh, it doesn't have a schedule. We... Well, we could also, October 5th is also, uh, currently has no agenda. Should um, we leave that open? Just... We could either leave it open or you could cancel the September 28th and the October 5th if you'd like. Do we have anything scheduled on the 12th besides the 12th? Applicant returning? returning? We have, a, we have a potential application, residential subdivision. Uh, about the fifth of them, let's see where so what's the likelihood of someone coming up in the next few weeks? For the fifth? Looking for the fifth, yeah. That's uh, unlikely. So we'll schedule to make a motion to cancel the 28th and the fifth meetings? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So our next meeting would be the 12th. Our next, October 12th. Me our next meeting is scheduled to be October 12th, 2017 at 7.30 here. I will now take a motion to adjourn. I'll we'll make adjourn. the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. 9.20. Good. You're too full.